This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Talking about Rex Hewerman and the many aspects of that case, as you do recall, the allegations of child porn and very extreme pornography found on his computer when it was raided by the FBI. What I'm wondering about is that's pretty damning unto itself. Like that will get him put away probably for the rest of his life on its own. Will that be through the trial for the murders? Or is that a whole separate charge and a whole separate case? Can that all come into the fold of the whole picture of Rex Hewerman? That's something we're going to talk about here with attorney Eric Faddis, former felony prosecutor. Eric, let's let's start here, though. It's got to be going through your mind, uh, trying to play it out, wondering once this makes it to trial, if it makes it to trial, what direction do you think the defense could possibly take on this, given the information that we know thus far? Yes, yeah, it's a bit of a head scratcher. And like you said, there's so much information rapidly developing but, you know, is there some kind of defense whereby Rex Herman says, yeah, hey, I knew that one sex worker and we had consensual sex and then, you know, that was it. And for everyone else, you've got the wrong person and you can't really tie me there and you can't prove it was me. Is that an avenue? Potentially, is it a viable avenue? That's a whole different question. And, you know, the, the defenses are starting to kind of go by the wayside as more and more evidence comes forth against Rex Herman. Yeah. And so uh, what is that defense going to look like years down the road? Difficult to say now, but I think that his options are beginning to dwindle. Yeah, getting very limited. Given the time lapse between some of the murders and Hewerman's arrest, uh, does the age of certain evidence impact admissibility or credibility in a case like this? You know, I think the age of some of the evidence is a big factor. You know, we see in cold cases, we're talking about things that happened years or decades ago. And what happens is sometimes witnesses disappear or die or evidence erodes or its quality is no longer um, testable, things like that. And so I think law enforcement is going to have some difficulties when they're trying to unearth pieces of evidence from a long time ago. And they're trying to investigate something that happened years or decades ago. Is this going to be... Uh, that's going to be a challenge, yeah. Is this a case where it's going to be difficult to get key witnesses on the stand if it goes to trial, especially just discussing the nature of what this is, if we're talking about sex workers and getting them to testify against him? I know we've seen a, a one or two that have come out and said they've went on a date with him and how odd he appeared or seemed. But to get someone who maybe actually had some sort of a negative encounter, maybe where it went too far or he attempted to take it further, just because that means they're going to have to go on the stand. They're going to have to identify themselves as a sex worker. And we're talking, this could have been 10 years ago. Some people get into that area out of desperation. They get out of that area. I have to go back and say, yes, I did this at this point in time. And this was bizarre. I don't see somebody necessarily wanting to put themselves or their, their maybe newfound reputation on the line or new life on the line to to nail Rex Hewerman. Do you see that being an issue? Oh gosh, I feel you. Yeah, I, I think that that's going to be problematic for the prosecution because like, like you were sort of alluding to, there can be kind of a code of silence among some of these illicit industries. It's that way in the drug scene, in the gang scene, and in the sex worker scene where you don't tell on other people, you don't disclose information to the police, you don't go help them because that could result in retaliation to you. Now, this situation is a little bit different because like you said, these events happened so long ago and does the notoriety and the potential fame of this case perhaps persuade someone to come forward and share information? It might. We could see people coming out of the woodwork and trying to disclose additional information about Rex Herman, um, whereas we often wouldn't otherwise if there wasn't such publicity. Mm -hmm. How critical is the nature of some of the other material that's been found that obviously are crimes, uh, sadistic sex child pornography that was found on his computer? Is that something that obviously it's going to weigh on a jury? I'm sure it's something he'll be probably charged with in terms of considering if he was capable of also committing murder, not just looking at sadistic porn and child porn, horrible enough right. in itself, 
but will that in itself be a key factor in really kind of painting the picture of who he was? That remains to be seen. I'm, you know, of course, this alleged child porn, I've I, I just only read reports naturally, but mm-hmm. that it was horrible and violent and everything else. And that in and of itself is a crime. Rex is going to have to answer for that uh, in and of itself. But I suspect that his defense is going to seek to bifurcate or separate anything related to the sadistic child porn piece from the murder charges. I think his defense is going to say, hey, look, it's too inflammatory, it's too prejudicial, and it's not really related to some allegation that he met with a sex worker and and murdered an adult, at least not without more information linking the two events. Do you see that being dismissed by the judge and saying, yeah, we don't have to put that into this murder trial, or is everything just too dark and really the context is too important at this time to just say, no, that's something different? I wouldn't be surprised if a judge looks at this and sides with Herman on that issue, yep. to be honest with you. Judges don't want to get reversed. Okay. One huge way to get reversed is by bringing in prior bad acts evidence like this child porn stuff that is not directly related to the charges the defendant is presently facing. And so, you know, it remains to be seen. But I could see a judge siding with the alleged serial killer here on this gruesome child porn aspect. And a 10,000 foot view of this as an attorney, are there any aspects of this investigation that you watch and go, that looks like it's being handled really well? Or are there any areas that you've seen this far that you go, we can poke some holes in that That really wasn't handled quite as up to the expectations that we should have? You know, in reviewing the reports that I've read, one thing that does stick out at me is this multi-jurisdictional investigation with all these moving parts, these different agencies. Oftentimes, those agencies aren't talking to one another, and they're not using the information one agency has to assist the second agency. When I was a prosecutor, I saw this all the time and saying, hey, why aren't you guys communicating and sharing information? And so perhaps the law enforcement shoots themselves in the knee in some of these, in the breadth of some of these investigations, and perhaps defense can try to find some kind of avenue within those shortcomings to to try and assert Mr. Ehrman's rights, but a little cloudy as of yet. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.